I guess probably a systematic, systematic way to look at it would be from um, the facial structures from deep to superficial. So, so let's start with the bones. So as we age, the bones dissolve. Um, so we lose the supporting structures here. Um, we lose the supporting structures around here. So you get the volume loss. Um, so above that, then we've got, um, so we have fat as well. So we've got the fat layer um, and fat, we will lose fat in some areas and gain fat in some areas. So an example of that, of the gaining or repositioning of fat, we might, you know, get some new fat under here. Um, we might lose fat around here and we might lose fat here. And so what does tox do? Okay, so anti-wrinkle can do a, a lot of things, but it's for the muscles. So, um, for example, any lines that we get that um, are caused by muscle movement, so raising your eyebrows, frowning, crow's feet, um, those sort of things can be prevented or reduced by relaxing the muscles. Um, we can always we can also use anti wrinkles for a brow lift. So we put it here, and then these muscles act unopposed and lift you a little bit. For people who like that, um, for some people with uh, big squarer faces, then we can slim the face. In terms of your clinic, when a, a patient comes in, I mean, if fifty is the new forty and forty is the new thirty. Why yeah. is a twenty-year-old coming in for a treatment? Why? Why? I've read before that you know a, a large majority of your clients, and certainly in Australia, the statistics point that a lot of twenty-year-olds are getting treatments for anti-aging. Do they yeah. want to look ten? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I find that um, probably the anti-wrinkle will start about twenty-six. So that's sort of an that's sort of an aging one. But the um, in the younger ones, we're often doing more beautification gotcha. than anti-aging. So, so they're, they're either seeing something on their mum, like a really deep frown line, and they're not wanting that ever, or they're, you know, they, they were born with a quite retracted chin so that they want to fix the lower third of their face, or they, had, they didn't have very great lateral outer cheeks, so they want to fix that. So often it's beautification rather than ageing, but it ends up being the same thing in a way because, yeah, they're similar. Can you share with us some of the yeah. things that you think have made the best difference to your confidence, to what you love about how you look now? And maybe share with us a few things that you would never do again. Okay, probably the only, I'll start with what I probably shouldn't have done. There's probably only one procedure that I shouldn't have done and that was rhinoplasty. And that didn't go so great. Yeah, that didn't go so great. My nose wasn't that bad. Oh, you know, I love liposuction. I love tummy tuck, breast reduction. I mean, yeah. And then all the fillers, everything, I love it. What are some quick wins that you can have that instantly read as ageless? So some, you know, we talked about temple filler being an unsung hero in treatment. Everyone knows about muscle relaxants. What are some other things that you maybe specialize at in the man's or you have seen amazing quick wins from? So the quick wins are going to come from mid-face filler. So, you know, the whole face rests on this mid-face, doesn't it? And um, so many people have volume loss there. But I would say the thing that I get frustrated that people don't have out there um, and it would impact on their ageing now and literally till they're 100 um, and not enough people have it. It's um, removing that fat from there. So wow. either with fat dissolving injections or with neck liposuction. So I just think everybody who's affected by that and cares about their ageing should really consider having that treatment because it'll just make you look younger forever. You know, we, we've talked about the ageing of the face, but let's scan down, you know, uh, are there non-surgical things that you can have done for your chest, your breasts, your tummy, your knees, your um, yeah. elbows? Are there yeah. areas that are showing the signs of ageing? I would say neck. Neck is something that we really focus on and patients often focus on it. 
they, they start a bit late. So they don't focus enough on neck. And then we find, oh, my neck. Um, so it's something I want to... I want to promote more to younger people because then it's much easier for us as they age. How um, young? How young is the right time to start? With on, it depends on the person, and it depends on you know if they're if they've got those skinny neck where the platysmal bands are already showing showing. Then I would say get onto it then. So they they could be forty, they could be something like that. I'm really curious as to your thoughts as of the role of skincare in a clinical practice and why you went out and created your own brand. Well, um, a few things and many, many reasons. When I first, my first job, um, we did our first skincare formulation, which is Kligman's formula, a brightening yeah. uh, topical. So I feel like, you know, that was 20 years ago. So we were putting, I worked in mostly, well, injectables weren't that big back then. And I was working in a laser, in a laser clinic where we did um, where we did a small amount of injectables and lots of energy-based devices. So all of our patients were having energy-based devices. So when you say energy-based, sorry for the layman, do you mean lasers? I mean, lasers, IPL, yeah. So yeah, we were putting most people on this Kligman's formula and I just saw how great it was and how much they loved it. So I think I always had a, a want to do my own since then. Um, what are some of the things that, you know, we can do if, if we can't afford fillers and injectables? Are there other things in conjunction with good skincare that will, that will really give you good bang for your buck? I think there's simple things that um, people forget about, like controlling your weight. So not going up and down. I think going up and down isn't great. Uh, I don't think that's great for your neck. If you tend to gain weight in your neck, it's not good for your body skin. Um, that's a really simple one. So, Didn't even I mean, everybody can try and do that. And do you think there's a time that, you know, you have a better sense of self that, it, you know, there's a, there's a point where you're too young and there's a point where you might be too old um, to have like a, a sober view of yourself, particularly in the aging um, process. Um, I'm not sure. I, I think I mostly worry about risk more than, more than okay. anything else. So when I think about um, my daughter, I just think, I would be happier for her to have lower risk procedures, but I just, I don't want her to have any higher risk procedures. Fair enough. I don't think we can be too old. We can definitely be too young. Yeah. Never too old. <laughs>